Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning. Uh, thank you for being here this morning. Uh, thanks uh, to those of you who joined us at Stone yesterday for our wellness series. It was a, a good conversation with Courtney. She encouraged us to remember that one meal doesn't change your life, that food should bring you joy. You shouldn't stress about it. Um, it, was, it was a really good talk. And so you'd be welcome to uh, watch the video on YouTube if you're interested. Um, we are also wanted to let you know that if you're, if you're driving, is that something we should share? Carrot cake for breakfast. Yeah, carrot cake. Carrot cake for breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dessert first, if, if that seems good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, if, a reminder that if you're driving past Stone, the harvest table is there. And um, this morning there were some daffodils on it, I think, and some leeks. And so lots of good things to share if you're interested. Um, also, Barb Parker next week is going to bring seeds for the uh, Stone Food Grains project. And they have lots of different kinds of seeds this year, hoping that people will fill the harvest table and share with neighbors and share with Royal City Mission. So um, you're welcome to be a part of that. Uh, we have uh, tomorrow evening at 7, the Worship and Faith Formation Committee will meet on Zoom. And on Thursday morning, the men are invited to the Bearded Barista for 10.30. And Thursday evening, there's choir practice, and it's here, right, for uh, combined choir practice. Um, and that's for uh, Sunday morning. Uh, Saturday morning, of course, is the breakfast from 8 to 11. How are we doing for help? Could use more help. That would be. That oh, thank you, Brent. <laughs> I'm always there. So. The dishwasher might work. <laughs> it depends. Does that depend on whether or not Brent's coming? He's <laughs> coming. It's working. <laughs> I'll come either way. <laughs> Excellent. It's not working. <laughs> uh, Kevin was working on it, but. Uh, working with it. So um, Stone invites you to uh, their, uh, take part in their takeout dinner, May 1st. It's a ham and scallop potato dinner. And so those tickets need to be ordered by Saturday. I think they're doing some of the food prep on Saturday. So if, uh, if you're interested, please give Edie a call. Uh, it's $20 for dinner. And um, Sunday, we are having our celebration for our affirming ministry. And so we're going to meet at Stone and worship together from 10 until probably 10.30, 10.40. We're gonna go out on the porch and we're all gonna take a picture together and then we're gonna let the choir come back first for the chimes. And the chimes are gonna greet us here. Um, and then we're gonna stand outside and listen to them. The weather's gonna be beautiful, um, please. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna take a picture of all of us outside and then we're gonna get Hunter and some other young people to carry food inside for us and set it up. And uh, we're gonna come in and we'll finish our worship together and then we're going to celebrate and eat together. Uh, we're hoping that you wear bright colors, that you bring bright colored food and we're gonna arrange it. Since Courtney said that it, you eat by what your body tells you you need, uh, we don't have to set or put meat together and salads together. We're going to do this, do it all by color, and you can eat whatever you want. And um, we're uh, going to, um, there was another thought behind that one, but it, uh, we do uh, food safety. Thank you. That's what it was. We realized that because we're having a, a little bit longer service and we're in two places, we're encouraging you, if you're bringing something that needs to be cold, that you bring it in a cooler, if it's hot, that you would you know, keep it well wrapped because there's, it's gonna be pretty complicated to try and hold things at stone and then hold them here at Rockwood. So, so plan your menu um, because we, we want to uh, celebrate. We don't wanna share food poisoning or anything like that. So <laughs> uh, we just thought if we were all mindful of that, we, it would be easier. Uh, there, there are other options. You could come and put things in the fridge here ahead of the service or, or whatever, but uh, please keep that in mind. Um, we'll make it all our projects, not just one groups. Uh, committee chairs, please have your uh, reports for the board meeting into me for April 28th so that we can get those reports together. 
Um, May 1st, I hope that some of you will come and join us at Stone for a cluster gathering. This is at 7 o'clock, it'll be about an hour and uh, maybe 20 minutes, an hour and a half uh, at the most. It's a chance just to talk to our neighbors, to hear what they're doing, what's exciting, and to share um, some information about the region. And I've talked to uh, three other groups that have done them around the regions, and they're really excited. They had really good gatherings. They got to know their neighbors a little bit. So I'm hoping that uh, we'll have three or four people from here. Uh, maybe if you're on the board, maybe if you just are interested in knowing what's happening in um, Berry Hill and Speedside, or my boss, or Aaron. Um, I just hope that you will join us for that. Um, other things happening in the wider community this afternoon in Speedside has a special concert at 2.30. It's $20 a person, just uh, get tickets at the door or, or pay at the door. And Kara Shaw is playing, and this is a friend of Mar Baker's. Uh, when she was a little girl, she was blind, and she would come along when her mom was teaching Mark's kids piano. and. Um, one of Mark's sons would play something on the radio and she would sit down and play it on the piano, just listening to it. And she's considered, continued her career in music and Mark said she's a beautiful pianist and there'll be other musicians there. So that's at speed side, 2.30 today. Um, and then tomorrow, Anishinaabe Outreach has invited us, uh, this is in your announcements, to their farm at Breslau from 9.30 to noon. And they're celebrating Earth Day together. There's going to be some planting and um, some other activities. Uh, the Knowledge Keeper is going to be um, holding a First Nations uh, ceremony to help us heal the Earth. So if you're able to join in that, I know it'll be a very special day. The other announcements this morning. Good news to share. Things that you're grateful for. I get for running a line to that TV. So. We only have one on wireless now, so <laughs> keeping our fingers crossed, we shouldn't have any problems. <clears throat> Never say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but we are grateful to Ed, and he was busy checking on the stove and, and working on that, and that does lots of things around the church. So. Um, any other good news to share? God calls us all in love. In love we come to worship. God calls us all in love. 
In love we come to worship. God calls us all in prayer. In prayer we come to worship. God calls us all to share our praise. In praise we come to worship. Let us worship with all that we are as we gather this day. Let us pray. As a good shepherd with their flock of sheep, so is God's loving care. As a mother with a newborn child, so is God's loving care. As a teacher concerned for a struggling student, so is God's loving care. As a cheerful care aid with an elderly person, so is God's loving care. Nothing can separate us from God's loving care. We find strength in that love. Fulfillment in that love. Freedom in that love. Acceptance in that love. And joy in that love. And so we are ready to worship. And give thanks to God for that love. Let us sing God is my shepherd. This is tonight at 748. Presence of joyous love forever. 
Yet even as we celebrate the shepherd and gather at the throne of new life, we admit our sin. We have been less than loving, less than grateful, less than kind. We have ruined green pastures and, and muddy many waters. We take more than our share at the banqueting table and are jealous of holy love. We are less than we are called to be, less than good news for the world. We need to be still again and pay attention to the risen one. We pray for forgiveness and Easter life in Christ. Gracious God, hear our silent prayers as we confess those things that separate us from you and from each other. Join me in our words of assurance from Revelation 7, verses 16 to 17. May resurrection love come to us. And all who seek this new life. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Please join me in our scripture reading from John 10, verses 11 to 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, and I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. May God bless this reading to our understanding and our faithful living. Amen. Please join in singing, Are You a Shepherd?
National Volunteer Week, but I received an email from Mark Laird, who's our new Executive Minister in Western Ontario Waterways, uh, thanking me for volunteering and saying that it was Volunteer Week. And um, interesting because a number of you have been hearing me whine and complain about having to count lump volunteer hours for the National Church. And, and so it was interesting to come across uh, that Canada is, celebrates volunteerism. And I think that 12.7 million, I didn't share that number at Stone, I had it in my head, because I think in 2023 they doubled that number. Uh, so it was interesting. And so it made me wonder if one of the reasons that the United Church is counting volunteers is because the church, like the government, recognizes how important volunteers are to our churches and to our communities. Um, it makes such a difference in people's lives, the things that um, each of you does in, in so many different places and ways in, in your life. And uh, so we, we're counting these hours. Uh, Bill Allen had said that if you're on a, a board that ha has staff or in a church where you, you have a few staff people and staff looks like a very expensive part of it and you say, well, um, how, how are you serving the world if all your money is going to pay for staff? Well, we're serving the world because all these volunteers are doing amazing things, being part of Habitat for Humanity, the Lions Club, um, the uh, grannies uh, do projects in the community. Um, so many different ways that you folks are reaching out. And uh, I think it, it makes sense that we would pause and celebrate all that you do. Um, the, the video suggested that when we volunteer, we um, improve our own competencies. How many times have you been sitting in a volunteer position and there's a job and you're going, oh, I could never do that job. And then they say, we've got nobody else. And you take a chance and you learn a new thing as a volunteer. Um, you. Um, get confidence in yourself. And, and sometimes volunteering leads into, into a new job or a new vocation. And uh, it helps us build connections and helps build community. Um, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about something else that I've always struggled with is discipleship. The United Church is talking about bold discipleship. And I think, well, how do we describe discipleship? And then I went, oh, that's easy. Volunteering is one of the ways that we are disciples in the world. When you go out in the world and you try and make a difference. Um, so I think those two words, being disciples, being volunteers, can almost be synonymous. This morning when we read in John's Gospel, Jesus wants us to know who we belong to, who we're grounded in, who God is. And so he, he goes back to the very essence of God so that we know that we can trust God, that God is with us, and that we can follow Jesus because he is part of God. He takes us back to Moses. And interestingly, Moses was serving as a shepherd. He left Egypt. He murdered someone there. He'd been a prince in Egypt, but, but because of the murder, he had to flee. And he'd met Zipporah, and he married her. And he was being a shepherd for his father-in-law, Jethro. He was out wandering with his flock, and he went up on Mount Horeb, and the 
sheep were grazing, and all of a sudden he saw that bush burst into flames. And he heard the voice of God saying, take off your shoes, this is holy ground. And he stood there and he listened, and God said that he was sending him back to Egypt to free God's people. And Moses is going like, this just doesn't seem like a good idea. How am I going to get out of this? He says, well, the people won't believe me. You'll, you'll have to tell me who you are so that, so that they'll, they'll believe me. Um, and God says, I am who I am. God is there from the beginning. He's the essence of life. I am who I am. So in John's Gospel, Jesus wants us to understand that he is part of God. He comes from God, and so he says, I am the bread of life. Not only do I feed people here and now, but I'm going to give you spiritual life that will sustain you when I'm gone. I'm the light of the world. I'm showing you where there are injustices, things we need to change, new ways of being together. I am the door. He talks about being the gate to the sheepfold, the door, the way in to God, the connection to God. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. So even before his death, he told his disciples, he tells us that he knew that he would die for us and that he would rise again and bring new life. To Thomas, he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. When, when he says, I'm going to prepare a place for you, and, and Thomas says, how are we going to know the way? And he says, I am the way. I'm going to show you the way. And he tells us, I'm the true vine, and you are the branches. We have life and are connected to God through him and to each other. In our passage to say, he says, I am the good shepherd. That takes us back to the descriptions of God that run all through the Testaments. We, uh, the Psalm 23 that we echoed this morning, that we sang this morning, God providing for all our needs in life and in death and in life beyond death. And he tells us that we are invited to follow Jesus, that we are going to be safe when we're followed, just as sheep are safe with a good shepherd. We, uh, I was reading a commentary and I created a little debate between the candlemen and the sheep people that uh, stoned this morning because I was testing out whether I had the right information, but the commentator said that they've always said that sheep were a little dumb. But that was because cattlemen were evaluating them. And cattlemen can herd from the back and the cattle go where they're supposed to go. But if you try and herd the sheep from the back, they just turn around and come behind you because they want to follow. And um, Tom was shaking his head. Yep, that's what sheep do. They don't, you don't lead them from the back. You lead them from the front. And Brian's going, but my cattle aren't dumb. <laughs> so we had some good fun with it. But, but the truth is, it's not about sheep or cattle, but it's about God is there, just like the shepherd can lead the sheep from the front with his own voice. We are led by God. We know God's voice in our lives through scripture. We know that we're loved, that we're forgiven, and that in caring for one another and sharing that love, that the world is a different place than it would be. The other thing that stood out for me in the scripture this morning pointed to translation. If you've been in Bible study with us, you discover that we often read from multiple translations. And what it is, is we read from one translation and we go, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. I don't know what it means. And so well, we've got to find some new information. So then we go to a paraphrase maybe and, and read how somebody's put it in their own words or to a different translation. And it's in those different words that things begin to open up. And they, then we understand what the passage might be saying to us. The truth is, translation plays a big role in our understanding of Scripture and also how we live out our lives as the church. And sometimes mistranslation plays a role. When I was in, in uh, Bethlehem, the um, Church of St. Catherine and the Church of Nativity, I think I've told you this before, are, are one building. They uh, they side-by-side -side sanctuaries, and below the Church of Nativity, there is a um, grotto that we believe was the place where Jesus was born, the stone manger. And 
not to be outdone, the Catholics on the other side in the Church of St. Catherine's have a grotto where they say that St. Jerome's penned the first Latin Bible. So up to that point, Bible's manuscripts are always in Greek and Hebrew, and St. Jerome, for the people of Rome, put the Bible into Latin, and it's his Latin translation that our English translation grew out of. So he did his best translation, and with verse um, 16, he says, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one fold and one shepherd, one fold and one shepherd. And so what the church read that as was, we will all be long in one place together, one way of being the church. And so what happened was, there was the original church that was founded by the disciples, and it became the Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church split apart because they didn't think they had it right. And so now the Orthodox are waiting for everybody to join them and the Catholics are waiting for everybody to join them. And then the Catholics and the Protestants split and the Protestants and the Protestants split. And we've all these groups that all think that we've got the one right way. Might be the reason why I grew up believing that everybody was gonna be United Church one day. Um, you know, we've got the right answer. But as scholars went back and they found new manuscripts and they studied the language more carefully and they looked to places in the scripture where words were used, Greek words were used and where they were used in the community, they went back and they said, that shouldn't be one fold, that should be one flock. Well, a whole flock doesn't have to be kept in the same sheep. It can be in different places. You can have your flock spread out. And what became important was not that we were all in the same church building thinking the same way, but that we understand ourselves all to belong to the same group, to the same shepherd. And that doesn't have to be limited by our Christian beliefs or people acting or thinking the same way as we do. It means that Jesus came so that all people could be connected to one another through the love of the shepherd, the love of God. This week, I was privileged to uh, take a, a short uh, workshop, I guess, online called Rethinking Preaching with uh, Emmanuel College. And with all the complaints about screens and online, I have to say, we didn't used to be able to go online for two days from our living room and have some of the best scholars in our community speaking to us. We used to have to go battle the traffic to Toronto, stay overnight, cost a lot of money, a lot of time. Um, there are incredible gifts in this new way of being together. And uh, we had excellent speakers. The, the first speaker, the keynote speaker, was a, a scholar from the United States, and she was talking about mental health and how particularly mental health had been treated in the community and in the church that we stigmatize people and people that couldn't work the same way as other people, people that struggled with depression or anxiety, were set apart. They were pushed to the sides. They were marked and people didn't encourage them to be active parts of the community. And she said that in the church, this led to us hiding our challenges. We tended to come in and, and look just like everybody else. And somebody says, how are you? And you say, I'm just fine. I'm not going to tell you that I woke up this morning and my head was spinning and I wasn't sure I could stand up. Um, I'm just going to tell you I'm fine and good and we're going to keep going forward. And what, what she pointed out is that we have all lost because of this. Because when we don't share from the fullness of who we are, we're so busy hiding things that we aren't fully engaged. And the people that maybe are set apart, they weren't welcomed in because they didn't think and act the same way as everybody else. We missed their gifts. We missed the things that they could offer to the community. One of the gifts is that if we have struggled with anxiety or depression, when someone else is struggling, we can share with them. We can have empathy for them because we've experienced what they have. When we have been pushed down by grief, um, if we hide that, the next person that's grieving doesn't have the opportunity to talk with us, to learn from us, to share those things. So the encouragement to 
to look at one another and see that we are so much more than any one part of our lives and that it's when we accept us our, each other fully that we have the full gift of one another. Another uh, speaker um, shared beautiful stories of scripture. I wish I, I could share them in the way she did, does. And, uh, and then she asked us just to breathe. Just take some time and breathe. And she said, now we were talking in scripture about, about suffering. I want you to think about a time in your life when you were suffering. And she said, now breathe and find that suffering in your body. And I went, and I, the story came right here when she asked me to do that. And I realized that we carry things that not consciously, but in our body, things that have happened to us and that by acknowledging them, we can talk to people about them and they can become lighter and we can let them know, go if we know that they're there. When we think of Jesus, we realize that he never said, put on your hat and gloves and dress and shirt and tie and suit and go in and sit in rows and be quiet and listen. He said, meet me on the hillside. Meet me on the road. Meet me for a meal. You're hungry? Have some food. You're hurting? Let me heal you. Let me restore you to community, to connect with one another. He especially invited those people on the margins, the people who had been separated by illness, the people who were separated, the tax collectors and the prostitutes. He invited everyone in to his community to be embraced. As we celebrate becoming affirming churches next week, we are indeed affirming people of different genders, different sexualities, and knowing that they are gifts from God and bring gifts of God to us. But we're also saying that God loves each of us just as we are. And it's okay to say to our church family, I have trouble hearing and so I need us to use microphones, or I have trouble um, seeing, so I'd like a larger version of, of the scripture. I have trouble being here sometimes, so I'd like to just sit back and be quiet when we're all having conversation. It's okay to share those things and make space for one another because we will all have different needs at different times. And when we know that we can be accepting of someone else, we can trust that someone else will be accepting of us when we're in need. When we work and volunteer in our churches and communities, um, sharing the love we know through Jesus to care for others and to care for the earth. We're not just volunteers, we're the faithful disciples that Jesus called us to be. And it's through our loving actions that we will help bring about God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. May it be so. Amen. The next video that we were going to show um, uh, is from the United Church about a conference that took place in the Philippines last year um, affirming gender and sexuality. And you can see it was called Rated R because there's still places in the Philippines where people aren't allowed to be free, or in East Asia that aren't allowed to be free because of their gender and sexuality. And so they called it religion, revolutions, and rainbows. And they talk about the gift the United Church has been in being affirming and helping to support people from other countries that are struggling and not received well. So um, I will put that link in contemplation and conversation. We'll find another time to share it when we can actually hear it. Um, but I'd like to share now in conversation. Uh, I just thought we would do a large group of come this morning. When has volunteering been a gift for you? When has a place that you've volunteered um, filled your heart, brought you gift, brought you joy? Colleen. When I work for the food bank, volunteering in Guam, uh -huh. I thought that was pretty fine because I learned how all that food got there. So, so you had the gift of learning about the food bank. And, and 
I was just going to say that the times that we volunteered in Toronto during the tools trip um, at the Good Shepherd, um, uh, a men's uh, homeless shelter where we had to, we, we made beds and uh, we did some other things there as well. I can't remember all of the things that we did, but there was also a place where we, I was trying to remember the name of it, where we served, uh, served dinner one time as well. Um, I was trying to think of the name, it's just not coming to me right now, but we also served dinner to to people that came in and, and, and that needed it. I think it was only like a, a loony or something for, for a dinner. So they just had to pay a loony and um, yeah, where he served dinner, dinner there as well. That was great times and uh, certainly an eye-opening experience for sure. It's a wonderful experience being with the young people too. Yeah, being with the young people, sure. Christine? Um, so when we went on, I think it was the first trip to Guatemala um, with the church, um, it was a wonderful experience well, I got to go with uh, my daughter Heidi, and it was a real bonding experience for us to be working together, seeing you know what it was like in a different part of the world together, and also with the other people from church. You know, we have some great stories um, just from from the group that we went to together. So, you know, Ollie, your bus ride to back to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> Very memorable. <laughs> Tell that story? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody knows it, right? Oh. <laughs> um, I'm steady on my feet. <laughs> um, um, well, literally, I, I have a habitat for humanity house, and part of uh, my down payment was 400 hours of volunteer work. 
um, either building the house or working in the restore or bringing snacks for people that are volunteering. Um, and I had someone from Eden Mills United Church take some of my hours for me. Um, but yeah, I was one of those people that really didn't think I was ever going to to get there. And so I still remember 2009 being in Marcy's garden and she said, you have to apply. <laughs> and every time I think about my habitat house, I swear, that's the first memory I have. So volunteers can change lives even just with one little sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing, and thank you for all that you do. This is the time in our service when we remember that everything we have comes from God, and that being here and going out into the world, whether it's close to home or in South Africa, that when we go, we go trusting that God has called us to be disciples and to share what we have with others. Let us pray. Generous God, we are so grateful for this community where we can come together and hear your word for our lives, know your deep love for us, and know your call to go out into the world and make a difference. And we pray that what we do here and do in the world would help share your love with others and bring healing and hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join me in our prayers of the people. Creator God, we give thanks for your good earth, and we are really seeing the bounty as plants grow, and, and there are leeks and other good foods to eat coming from the earth. We know that we have muddied the waters and hurt the earth, and we pray that you would show us ways to bring healing to the earth so that your it can restore and, and provide for the people and the creatures that you gave life to. Wherever there is war, violence, injustice, or abuse, we pray for your peace. We think especially of the people of Ukraine and Russia, Israel and Gaza, Iran, Sudan, and Haiti. We ask that peaceful solutions might be found and that especially those people that have been displaced from their homes and are grieving the loss of loved ones might find comfort and security. We pray in our prayer cycle for the people of Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia. We lift up to you all those who experience discrimination and ask that we would be able to see beyond difference and see the gift in each person and recognize what they bring that is unique and is, can contribute. We. Uh, we think especially of our Black, First Nations, Métis, South Asian, LGBTQ2, SI, plus, and siblings from other faith groups, and ask that people would meet them in love and respect and dignity. We pray for those struggling with physical and mental illness. We ask for healing and hope. We pray for strength and patience for caregivers. We lift up people who are struggling in relationships and ask that they might find loving paths forward. We pray for companionship for the lonely and refuge for the homeless. We pray for your church. Wherever people come together to know you through your son Jesus, we ask that we might be true disciples taking your love and healing to the world. We ask your blessings on our congregations of Rockwood and Stone and on each person gathered here and those who can't be with us today. We pray by name for Barb, Bette, Bev, Bill, Connie, Charlene, Don, Deborah, Doug in Virginia, Evelyn, Georgina, Grace, Harry, Heather, Joan, Kathy, Ken, Linda, Mabel, Marion, Mary, Mike, Paul, Ron, Ryan, Sebastian, Sandy, Sarah, Tammy, Thane, Wendy, Werner, and Victoria. We pray for our partners in Anishinaabeg Outreach, the Canadian Food Brains Bank, East Volunteer Community Services, Mission and Service, and the Royal Women's Support Program. For Chalmers Community Center, Royal City Mission, and Hope House. For our neighbors, Everton Community Church, for Chevron, Primrose, Pastoral Charter, 
and for the Bermuda Nova Scotia Regional Council and the members, ministers, friends and staff of our United Church in Western Ontario waterways across Canada and around the world. God, hear our prayers, spoken and unspoken, and answer in your life. And pray this with the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join in singing, You, Lord, are both Lamb and Shepherd. Jesus Christ this day and always. 